Good morning. morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. God's grace through Christ is offered to everyone. Know that whoever you are, wherever you're from, whatever you're going through, you are welcome here today. If you all have your bulletins with you today, uh, you might take a note and see on the back page that uh, June 12th, we're having a very important um, state of the church meeting right after church. Uh, we'll run out, we'll grab a donut and a cup of coffee, and we'll come back in. We'll have a discussion about what's happening with the um, United Methodist Church and regarding human sexuality. We'll talk about church finances and a lot of other stuff. Uh, don't forget, if you've got old blue jeans, we could use those um, to make pillows for the uh, upper room. So if you've got some old blue jeans, underneath that table out in the narthex is a place that you can bring and store those. Do we have any other announcements that we need to be made aware of today? Kathy, you want to talk about anything? All right. Cody, all the way up front, buddy. Well, we met this week to talk about our uh, Wednesday morning kid, kids club, and we were able to slot in the different activities that we'll be doing each Wednesday, and I wrote them on the sign-up sheet in red ink, so if you're interested in helping, please please sign up. We really, we really need some help. We got a, a couple people to volunteer last week, but it's going to take more than that to float it. But now you'll know what you're signing up for. And I just want to tell you again, you don't have to lead it. You just have to assist, unless you have a desire to lead. And we, you know, we're always wanting leaders. So if you see something that you like and you think maybe, well, that'd be something I could lead, we'd be happy to do that. Because the more of us that get involved in it, the stronger the program is. If it's only a few people doing it, it um, I think it loses its strength. I think it's stronger if more of us help. We're running it from 9 o'clock in the morning until 12 o'clock. We're going to serve um, sack lunches. And I'll be asking people to help with those sack lunches, like make sandwiches and cookies to, to go in the bag. So be, if you stop making eye contact with me, I'll call you on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Anybody else have anything? All right. So in just a second, I'm going to invite you to stand and welcome each other. And remember that today you can shake hands, you can elbow bump, fist bump, you can just wave to each other. But let's stand for a moment as we are able. Let's welcome our neighbor and let's wave to all of those that are watching online. We are so glad that you're here. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> morning. As long as we're standing, how about if we sing, shall we?
And God said, may there be light, and Randy Volkman did so. So thank you, thank you for the light, Randy. And just in case somebody forgets their glasses, we have the big print now. Well, we uh, had a little trouble last time, so I just wanted to make sure you were covered. So can you read this from the front row? <laughs> they can read that from the back row. Please join in the call to worship. We have come this morning to worship. We worship the one who calls prophets and teachers and us. We have come to praise God. We have come to worship God. Now please join in the opening prayer. Holy, holy, holy Lord, this morning we pray that you might ignite within us a fiery pressure for your will throughout the world today. Make us wholly present to experience a new birth and awaken possibilities within us. Open our hearts to your healing love. For we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. This is that part of our service each and every week where we have the privilege of going before God as a family of faith, knowing that when we pray together, there's power in our prayers. We generally start by sharing our joys and then our concerns, so I will open it up and ask if anybody has a joy that you would like to share today. Are oh, you going to be quiet today, huh? Okay. Well, we, there are... Um, there's something about this, this time of year, don't you think? I mean, when you get the graduations and confirmations and all the different things that are going on in the world right now in our community, what a special time. So, you know, I, I think we, we remember just how special this, this time of our year is. Coletta? Well, last week I announced that my granddaughter was going to graduate. Went to the graduation. We went back and opened gifts. Monday night I got this phone call, so it was kind of a concern, but it is a joy. Got a phone call from my daughter-in-law. And she said, you can thank God and all your angels in heaven. That granddaughter rolled her car Monday night, and she is okay no broken bones, no, oh, but I thanked God wow. for being with her, surrounding her. Amen. How about concerns, things going on in our life that we want to lift up before God? And Becky and the Whites. Kim and Dana and several of our friends, keep your prayers for Joe Coleman, where he's getting along really well, he's in therapy, doing good, still needs our prayers. So please keep Joe Coleman in your prayers. You know, as we, as we prepare to go to God in prayer, we can't forget that this congregation, this community, has witnessed incredible healing through the years we have stories to tell of healing so that when we go to God in prayer we come with an expectation of continued healing let's remember today all of those that are involved in agriculture and that are on the roads and dealing with equipment let's remember all of our young people right now that they might um, make good decisions during this period of time Let's go to God in prayer, shall we? Gracious and loving God, divine lover of our souls, Lord, we come today so thankful for the blue sky, the green grass, the warm breeze, the colorful flowers that you provide for us as a sign of your creation and your recreation every single day. 
Lord, we give you thanks and praise for bringing home our children safely. We give you thanks and praise for the wonderful way that we celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, all of those kinds of things that remind us of just how blessed we are. But Lord, we also know that in the midst of this, there are those that are struggling, those that are suffering from different illnesses, different diseases, those that have lost dear loved ones. For all of those, Lord, we ask that you would care for them, comfort them in their time of need. Lord, for those that are hurting right now, maybe through the loss of a loved one or maybe they're about to lose a loved one. We lift them up before you asking that you would touch them with a special grace and comfort. Lord, for our agriculture family that's out on the roads and in the fields and dealing with heavy equipment, we'd ask that you would keep them safe in their time of need and during this busy, busy period. And Lord, for young people everywhere, we pray your wisdom upon each and every one that they might make the best of decisions during this time of fun and, and overdoing it sometimes. Lord, for all of those, as we lift them up to you today, more than anything, we pray your presence and your peace upon each and every one that they might know that However difficult today seems, however dark the clouds might appear in this moment, you are always with them, arm in arm, step for step, ready to carry them through even such a time as this. For all of this, we give you praise and thanksgiving. Now let us join together with our brothers and sisters around the world this morning as we pray the prayer that your Son taught us when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may stay seated and we'll sing our next song.
God of all great gifts, this morning we bring you these, knowing that you are the God of all our gifts. You constantly provide for us, always caring for us, and as we have been abundantly provided for, so help us give abundantly to the work that you would have us do, the work of caring for those who are poor, hurt, and suffering. Lord, accept these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. This morning's Holy Scripture comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 through 11. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when, when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who had been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For those that were here last week, um, you might remember that we talked about um, Satan, the devil, Lucifer, whatever name you want to use. And, and we talked about how the devil is the great deceiver. Um, whispering to us always lies and deceiving us from the real truth. And sometimes you might remember that uh, it said the devil is actually looks like, makes it appear like he is of the light. So it, it looks like something that God would, would want us to do, but in fact it's the devil leading us in the wrong direction. Now as we as we walk through, that might seem a long ways from this scripture today, but as we walk through this scripture, and, and we're going to focus on the beginning of it and the end of it today, um, as we walk through this, when we get to the end, think about for just a moment if what we talk about today might have a little bit to do with the whisper of Satan, the great deceiver and the great liar. This morning... It's like every morning, right? Uh, every Sunday morning, service started at 9. Um, how many got up? Well, Doug probably did. Doug probably got up at 5, 5, and he probably got dressed and was ready to go at 6 and just sat around waiting to come to church. That's what I'm guessing happened. Is that, am I? No, you probably didn't, did you're, you? You're, you're close. <laughs> Have you, ever, have you ever heard the word procrastinate? Have you, have, you ever, have you ever heard that word? No, no. Anybody in here ever procrastinated? Yeah, yeah. Good luck. And the other half of you will have confession later. Well, I think that's really, when you think about it, that's really what this scripture is today. This is about procrastination. Listen to the very first part of this. So when they had come together, they assessed him, Lord, is it the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? So um, they're still expecting God to take over the world and make all things right, heaven on earth. There's still that expectation for that. So they're saying... Lord, is this the time that you're going to do that? And Jesus replies to them, it's not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. You don't get to know. It's not for you to know. They really wanted to know, is this the time? 
And, and, and it could look in a lot of different ways. At the end, the, the two men in white robes that we assume are angels said, then Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. There's going to be a moment for all of us, each and every one of us, at some point, where we're going to meet God. Maybe that's when we're leaving and transitioning into eternity. Maybe it's when Jesus comes down from heaven, but there's going to be a moment, and these people were saying, is this it? Is today the day? Is this the exact moment that that is going to happen? So we've got procrastination, which is to delay or postpone the action to put off doing something. They're, they're really talking about that, aren't they? Because Jesus is saying, get ready to go. Get ready to meet Jesus again because you don't know when that's going to be and you don't get to control it. And they're saying, Tell me when it's going to happen, and I'll get ready when, when humans do that, which is right before I need to, right? I'm not going to worry about that today if I don't have to worry about it for 20 years, right? The problem is we don't get to choose. What's it mean if I asked you, are you ready? What would that mean? How do we know if we are ready? Well, I, I, I looked through all the different verses and I tried to find the one that I thought, this says right here, here's an instruction. Do this and you'll be ready to meet Jesus. Matthew 24, verse 36, seems like it's pretty clear. It says, but of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven only my father knows so 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 matthew's saying look okay you're still not going to know when until we get then to second timothy and second timothy says this flee also your youthful lust but pursue righteousness faith love peace and those who call on the lord out of a pure heart so so if we're righteous, we'll look like we have faith, love, and peace. We'll live a life that when people see us, they'll notice that the way that we carry ourselves, the words that we speak, they think of the words faith, love, and peace. That's what it means to be righteous. It means to be in a right relationship with God, right? So that's, that's, that's sort of the what would this look like. If we were ready, we would be people that are righteous in a, in a right relationship with God and a right relationship with our neighbor. And that relationship would look like faith, love, and peace. We would be, we would be enamored with, we would be um, preoccupied with, we would be focused on faith, love and peace the conversations that we would have wouldn't be centered around college football they'd be centered around faith love and peace so so we're going to do that right we're going to go out and we're going to we're going to we're going to really focus on this and we're going to do that today so but i don't know how to do that how would i get myself in a place where I was focused on faith, love, and peace. John Wesley, the founder of the United Methodist Church, he came up with this idea um, called the spiritual disciplines. Okay, and in the spiritual disciplines, John Wesley thought there were works of piety between us and God. There were things that we could do that would help us grow in faith, love, and peace. And he thought that there were works of mercy. 
okay? Things that we could do for our neighbor that would help us grow in faith, love, and peace. Some of those things we do on our own. Some of those things we do as a community. But if we would practice those spiritual disciplines, we would grow closer in faith, love, and peace. So if we wanted to be righteous, we would do... Uh, we would exercise the spiritual discipline so that we could grow closer to God. Listen to this one. This is quite a list. I want you to think about everything that you have going on this week, okay? Works of piety, and this is the individual thing. These are the things that you would do individually. Reading, meditating, studying the scriptures, prayer, fasting, regularly attending worship, healthy living, and sharing our faith with others. You got that? We'll put a, little, put a little checklist together for you. These are the things that we do in common. We share this in the sacraments, Christian conferencing, to hold one another accountable, and we study the Bible. Now you're halfway there. Works of mercy, we're going to do good works, we're going to visit the sick, visit those in prison, feed the hungry, giving generously to the needs of others. That's what we do as a group. Individually, we're going to seek justice and oppression and discrimination um, and address the needs of the poor. Woo! <laughs> you all right? <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, so it's quite a list of things, right? So, so here's what we've got. In order to be ready, we've got to ha be in a place where we're in a right relationship with God and our neighbor. What that looks like is we want to create in us a spirit of faith, peace, and love. How we do that is this whole long list of spiritual disciplines. And we know what it is. And it's a nice long list. And is there anybody that would read that list and say, hey, if I practice those daily, I'm pretty sure I get closer to God, right? So we know what it is. We know why it is. We know how to do it. What is it then that's preventing us from doing all this? It's our schedules, isn't it? If I look at our time the time that's coming up this week, and I said to you, that list that we're going to do, we're going to do each one of those every day, and I'll probably need hour a day, hour and a half a day. What time would you like to do that? Yeah, that's hard, isn't it? You know, I've often said that I think it would be easier today in this, in this setting or in any church setting I think I would have an easier time today raising $10,000 during service than I would a 1,000 hours of volunteer work. Our time is so precious to us. And we have every single thing scheduled. And we have it scheduled to the minute so that when it comes to our spiritual health, we look at that and we say, I'll get to it when things slow down. Right? How many of us in here have said, well, you know, we're in the middle of graduation season, confirmation season, planting season, calfing season, baseball season, golf season. It's going to slow down, and when it slows down, I'll get to it. Right? I'll tend to my spiritual needs soon. Soon. Well, pretty soon. I've got, well, then we're going to go on vacation, right? And they're remodeling the house, so I can't. So, but I'll do it soon when things slow down. So I, I had um, this week, uh, uh, I did my annual physical. I'm, I'm officially diagnosed as an old, short, fat, white guy. <laughs> That's my official diagnosis, I think. Um, but other than that, I'm in really good health. <laughs> Praise God. I thank God for that. But what happens is uh, you go in before your physical and they siphon off a couple gallons of blood. I don't know, three or four it seemed like. 
<laughs> Dennis helped me with that. I, and and uh, they, got the, they got my three or four gallons of blood. And then you wait. You know, they do all the testing, and then you wait, and you go in. In my case, I went in a week later, and they told me what the results are. I didn't, I didn't think very much about this when I was younger. Um, but as you get older, you begin to wonder during this week, is this the week they find something? Right? Is this the week that some level is off the chart or under the chart or, or things have gone haywire? And, and is this the year that they find something? because we've had so many people that I've known that that's happened to, some of the people in here. Maybe it's happened to you. Maybe you're on that pathway. See, we don't know. Jesus says to us, you don't know the hour and you're not going to know the hour and it could be any minute. Jesus said, don't worry about that. Just get ready. Just get ready. And then he says, if you want to be ready, make yourself righteous. Put yourself in a right relationship with God. Put yourself in a right relationship with your neighbor. What's that look like? It looks like growing closer to them. It looks like faith, love, and peace, not only with God, but with your neighbor. And then Jesus says, go ahead, get started. Ready, go. Ready, go. And I think so many of us today answer that with, I'll get to it. I'm going pretty soon when things slow down. Friends, I'm here to say, and we've all experienced it, for some, there isn't tomorrow. For some, there's not this afternoon. And in that moment, we're going to stand before our Maker. And we're going to have to answer, are you ready? Will you be terrified? Will you be excited? You know, I, I, I wonder what that will be like in that moment, right? Will, will we be so in awe? Will we be terrified? You know, I often think back to the first half of my life and and they're going to play that video. Uh, we're going to review that with God in that moment. And there probably won't be a fast forward button that I can just forget that part. Those words that you said that you can't take back. The time that you didn't spend that you don't get back. All of those kinds of things we have an opportunity to fix today. We can go from the harsh word to words of love. We can go from being focused on ourselves to being focused on God and our neighbor we can find a way to be peace. Jesus said to us, you're not going to know when, so get ready. Go. How will you respond to that today? Will you begin to grow closer? Or will you say to Jesus, I'll get to it later, tomorrow, soon. Let's pray. 
Lord, as we gather here today, we come thankful. Thankful for the opportunity that you give us to grow close to you and to our neighbors. Help us to orient our lives towards righteousness, towards love, faith, and peace, that we might be ready when at last we meet again. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand now as you're able, and we'll sing our closing hymn. Sisters and brothers in Christ, as we prepare to leave this sacred place this morning and enter back out into the world for one more week, remember, fear not, do not let your hearts be troubled, and in the midst of the storm, remember to trust in God, and may the blessing of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit go with you today and always. Go with God, and God will surely go with you. Amen.